This is going to be a valve setting video. We often get asked how to set valves on locomotives, so we thought we would try to put this video together. Start by showing you some parts, explaining what things do, and hopefully we can set some valves for you. Now, if you're going to set valves, you've got to know what all the parts are. If you've got the idea of the fundamental working of it, it makes life a lot easier. So here are the components. We've got a piston on a piston rod. We've got the cylinder set with the port face and the ports, the steam chest that goes on top, the valve itself, which is a D valve with a pocket in it, and cylinder covers. So the piston will go into the uh, cylinder block, and the covers on each end stop the steam getting out. But effectively, what you've got here is the steam pushing the piston from one end of the cylinder to the other and then returning it, pushing it again back to where it came from. So the two power strokes per revolution is quite different to a car engine which goes around several times before you get a power stroke. Now the steam comes down into the steam chest which goes on the top of the uh, cylinder block like that or sometimes they're on their side inside the frames but the valve lives in the steam chest like so, and steam comes down from the boiler through a steam pipe into this steam chest and is kept in there under pressure by the cover. Now what the valve is doing is at the moment covering the ports. You've got three ports under here, each one on the end is connected to the end of the cylinder, so those holes there are connected directly through to this port and same again on the other end and then the middle one is the exhaust port and that connects straight through into the exhaust system. The valve sits over there, remember it's got full steam pressure all over it, pressing down, and as soon as it opens that port, steam comes whooshing through there, out of the ports at this end, and pushes the piston right down the cylinder. The valve then moves along, the valve gear moves along to that side, opens the port at this end, steam comes this way, pushes the port back. Now, while that's going on, the little D piece underneath, uh, that pocket underneath the valve, that is connecting, when the live steam's going down this port, this one is connected to the exhaust. So effectively, it's going to and fro like that, connecting first this one to live steam, that one to exhaust, and then this one to live steam, and that one to exhaust. And of course this is all happening very fast. But um, if you understand the principles of it, you know what you're trying to aim for when you set the valve. Good. That made sense to me. So here we are with the cylinder on our jack loco. This is a, a new model. It's not quite finished. We're going to set up the valves for real on this one. See if we can show you how it's done. Well, we start off by getting the reversing lever in its middle position. So you see the notch in the middle there? Yep. I drop it into the notch. Now that should put the reversing gear in mid-gear. So I can show you it going into reverse and into forward. Yep. So it goes to the top and the bottom of the link. Unusually on this engine, reverses at the top, forwards at the top. Normally it's reverse at the top and forward at the bottom. Yeah. So this is an, an awkward valve gear. It was made in the 1890s and maybe they just got it wrong. <laughs> but um, once you've got that set, you start off with the mid-gear position. Okay. And you then have a look in your steam chest. You've got the steam coming down through this hole here, filling the steam chest. Yep. When the cover's on it, this is full of steam pressure, as you recall from the other one. Yep. Now, as soon as the engine moves, the valve goes to and fro, and you want it to be centralised, so it's just opening those ports a touch at each end. So that gives you an approximate mid position for the valve. This engine's still quite tight because you're so new. So then you go into forward gear, which is near but not quite to the top of the link. 
Because you need to allow a little bit of clearance. You should see our valves opening this time. Oh, I see. Now yep. When it goes into full, goes forward, you should see the ports yep. open fully one end and then fully the other end. Yeah. Yep. That gives you the, the basic valve setting, and you can mark them where the notch goes in the reversing lever for that forward position. Then you come into reverse, and if you're lucky, it does the same thing. Reasonably, but not 100%. Um, now, we can work on that. You can alter the throw of the return crank. In theory, there's an, a set position for that, and it, it'll give you the right position when it's set correctly. But that's one thing to alter. And the link here must swing to and fro an exactly equal amount to get the same uh, valve settings in forward and in reverse. And you can achieve that either by altering the length of this rod, or more easily on this engine, putting some shims underneath the mounting point. Just pack it out a little bit. Moves the, the uh, pivot point back a touch and, and can equalise the throw. So we'll need to go over this engine and just make sure that the throw is correct before we go any further. When you're setting valves on a loco, deal with just one side at a time. Ignore the other side. You have to go around and do that one later. So just get one side right. In addition to opening the ports, the time that it opens it is critical. Some valve gears you can adjust it and some it's in the linkage and you won't do anything about it. But what you're actually looking for is when the crank pin is on front dead centre, so the piston's at the front of the uh, cylinder, that valve should be just beginning to open. You see it's open just a crack. So as you go round, on front dead centre it begins to open. At that position it should be pretty much fully open, which it is. And then as you come round to about there it should close. And it closes. Yep. Now when you get to the back dead centre, you get the same again but at the other end. So at back dead centre that port's just begun to open. Yep. There should be fully open. One second. Okay, yep. And as you come round, it should close again before you get back to the front dead centre. Yep. So if you look at this as a clock, your front dead centre is at three o'clock and it should just be opening. At about five o'clock, it should be fully open. And about between seven and eight o'clock, it should close. And then the back port should open at nine o'clock. At, at 10 or 11 o'clock it should be fully open and it should close at about 1 or 2. Okay, that gives you the right timing sequence? Yes. So we've adjusted the return crank, pinned the position for it, had a look at the uh, swing on the uh, uh, die block here and uh, set the position for full forward gear, notch up, mid gear, full reverse gear and it's notch up. We put the covers back on and ready to test her on air. So she's now running quite nicely. All we've done is put a um, bit of adjustment on the uh, return crank, thin that. Have a look at the uh, setup of the uh, pivot point for the die block. Put the covers back on, and we're running her on compressed air. So we've got all the other features the blower, whistle, injector, gauge blowdown, all working on air. Let me put her into reverse. Off she goes again. That's in the top of the, the link, and when you're not sure up, bring it back and it starts to go a little bit faster. So you go from full gear to notch up position. The valve moves a little bit less distance in notch up and saves a bit of speed. You can see the length of this moving there. And bring it right back towards the middle. 
the valve is moving a shorter distance and there's a sort of optimum spot where it shall run happily. Still the new loco so everything's a bit tight as well. Yeah, it's all bedding in. <laughs> 